Thanks for coming to my channel. This is Midnight Moon Tarot and I'm Diana coming to you from New Orleans, Louisiana. And this reading is for Aries for the week of the 4th through the 11th, 2020. And just keep in mind that all tarot readings are timeless. So whether you come across this reading right after I upload, a week, month, or even a year from now, if you feel drawn to watch it, most likely you'll find a message for you within the reading. Also, if it doesn't completely resonate with you, just keep the parts that do, disregard the rest. And if you know your other planetary placements, you can listen to those signs as well for additional messages. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and jump right in and calibrate these cards to the astrological signs of Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the week of the 4th through the 11th of October 2020. Spirit, what love messages do you have for Aries for October 4th through the 11th, 2020? Spirit, what love messages do you have for Aries for the week of October 4th through the 11th, 2020? I'm going to shuffle one more time and divide these into three stacks. Okay. All right. All right, the card on the bottom of the deck is the Two of Pentacles. Okay, so the Two of Pentacles is going to be your overall energy for this spread. Now, the Two of Pentacles is um, an energy that pretty much is just like what it looks like. Uh, you can see the little guy here on the shore. He's uh, only focused on what he's doing. He has his back turned to this tragedy that's going on behind him. Uh, other people may perceive this person as somebody who just doesn't care. They may be cold, um, you know, egotistical, but a lot of times it's because the person has a lot of things going on inside of them and they're super focused on uh, what is uh, most important to them at that time. They could be having some crisis in their life as well. You see these little ships behind them are being tossed around and these people on these ships, they don't know if, uh, you know, they're going to live or die. Their boats are going to sink. But all they know is that this guy has their back to them because he seems to be so self-involved okay uh they may be trying as good as they can you see he's juggling you they may he may be trying as best he can just to keep the things in his life balanced okay so it's not always a bad card uh and it could also mean that regardless of the things that are going on around you you need to really uh you know laser focus in on something that is the most important to you okay now for those of you who are new here i do four rows and the first row pertains to you what you may have been going through in the recent past things you're currently dealing with and things that are uh, coming towards you the second row is the same thing only it's for your twin flame soulmate karmic partner divine counterpart this could be um, somebody you just met however Regardless of your relationship status, as bad as this may sound, uh, it's the person that you think of the most, the one that's on your mind when you wake up in the morning and the person you're thinking about when you go to sleep at night. That third row has to do with our inner fears and anxieties, our obstacles and challenges. It's not necessarily anything that's actually happening around us, but we create our environment by what we think about most, pretty much like the law of attraction. So if you are focused on your anxieties and your fears, and oh, it's never going to work and it's never going to happen, then that is exactly what you're going to create in your life. So this, this particular column helps us to, uh, you know, find out what it is that we need to really work on to change in order to bring into effect the things that we desire the most. And that last column and I'm smiling because they're beautiful cards here. You've got the lovers as well as the two of cups. But that is your um, probable outcome. And I say probable because if you don't like the outcome, uh, being uh, aware of the energies and Tarot lets us become aware of the energies that are around us. It's not necessarily fortune telling, but if you are aware of these energies and these different things that are going to affect us, you can prepare yourself for them if you don't like them so that you can, uh, you know, manipulate the environment around you. 
to uh, kind of counter those energies. Okay, now I've just laid out two cards in each of the four rows, and as I go um, through here, I'm going to lay down, I'm going to do the same thing <laughs> two more times, and uh, then we'll have like 24 cards by the end of the reading and have a pretty good idea about what's going on. All right, guys, so we have this seven of pentacles as well as the world. And absolutely, you, like if this card right here, you may be really focused on creating that future that you want for yourself to open up all these wonderful things in the world that are coming towards you. You see this seven of pentacles, and he's really, really focused on nurturing this little garden that he's growing. He's out there every day pulling the weeds and, and making sure that everything is running just right and that nothing's going to come in. There's no no bugs there's no insects he's kind of nipping it in the bud so to speak so yeah to quote Barney Five but yeah before anything bad can happen he's ready there to be prepared for it okay so yeah and that way he can make sure that these different changes and uh, this bountiful future that he's hoping for can actually come to fruition now, in your partner's column, we have the Three of Wands as well as the King of Cups. So this tells me that you could very well be dealing with a water sign being Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. Or it could be anybody that has an abundance of water in their chart. Now, if you guys don't know your full charts, there's a lot of places online you can go to um, and get your birth chart information with all of your <clears throat> different houses and signs that are in there as well. So that helps to uh, know a little more about what you're dealing with, especially if you know your partner's birthday, you can figure all that out. All right, so you have the three of wands, and this tells me that you've kind of been, uh, you know, you're still focused on what's coming in the future. You're doing all that work that you need to, and you're kind of waiting for your ships to come in. You've uh, really focused on that a lot, but at the same time, there is a new person that is coming into your life that's kind of like, you know, offering you all this love. I have a son. Um, he's in his mid thirties now, but uh, when he was going to college and he's like this super brain person, I don't know how in the world I got this child, but, uh, yeah, he's like an astro aero astronomic engineer, mathematician, computer scientist person, right? Okay. He's super brainy. But, uh, yeah, when he was going to college, he didn't date, and he was like, I was like, why didn't you date? And when he would tutor different females and stuff, you know, you could tell they were all googly-eyed and stuff about him, but uh, they were, he, he was just like really focused on his work, and he said, well, mom, if I date, then they're, you know, I'm going to be distracted, my studies might fail, you know, there's always that chance that an, uh, an unplanned baby comes in and then it screws up the whole little future that he planned for himself. So you've been working really, really hard to achieve <clears throat> all the things that you want. Uh, and you're waiting on that to come in. You're waiting for it to come to fruition so that you can, uh, you know, reap your rewards. All right. And so that is coming. Just hang in there. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted by the chaos and different things that are going on around you, okay? Now, your obstacles and challenges are the Fool as well as the Three of Cups. And again, here we have this talk about, uh, you know, third-party situations. We're talking about partying. We're talking about, you know, enjoying, you know, yourself maybe a little too much. <clears throat> but at the same time, you're really focused on, you know, starting this new uh, part of your life and going ahead and making that leap of faith. You don't really seem to be uh, as if you are the fool, and the fool is not a stupid person. The fool talks about like the naivety of uh, jumping into something uninformed and unplanned and just expecting that it will work out. And a lot of times that does just because of the power of your mind creating it to be. But as hard as you've been working, uh, this warns us that don't change your method now. Don't just go in and jump in willy-nilly and expect things to continue working because these are your obstacles and challenges. These are your fears and anxieties, okay? All right, so when we get to your uh, probable outcome, we have two of cups as well as the lover's card. Now, the lover's card 
a lot of people are so super excited to get the lover's card, but it's not always like champagne and roses and things like that. Uh, there's always this, uh, you know, opposites attract. There's always like these challenges that you are going to meet when you, uh, when you come into contact with this person that uh, is going to be a significant love interest in your life. With the Two of Cups, it tells me that you would be able to, uh, you know, work through these things and come to those balances and compromises and that there is a lot of mutual respect. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, partners choose their other person not only because of the love factor, but like like how generals choose their lieutenants. The one that has that same focus, the one that has the same plan for the future, the one that uh, is willing to make those sacrifices and goals and things like that, you know, uh, sometimes one partner or the other has to travel, kind of like me, right? So I'm always traveling. So Anyway, you have to uh, understand that uh, sometimes you have to make these sacrifices in order to acquire the things that you want uh, so that you can create that future that you desire most, okay? So just because there's a love coming into your life doesn't mean you have to put your life on hold at all because this person is going to be loving and understanding and, uh, you know, they may have their same thing going on at the same time. And with this Two of Cups, you do get that mutual will trust and respect okay now with your uh, next set of columns we have the five of swords as well as the strength card and your partner's column we have the queen of swords and the knight of pentacles in your obstacles and challenges you have the eight of wands and the ace of pentacles and in your probable outcome we have the two of wands as well as the high priestess Okay, so yeah, this Five of Swords talks about, you know, people who don't like seeing you uh, becoming successful. These are people that are wearing like, uh, it's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, not everybody that says they're your friend are your friend. Uh, some of these people are there to sabotage you and to trip you up and to keep you from achieving the things you want just because they're jealous, okay? Uh, they may not even recognize it as, as that themselves, but, you know, <laughs> they don't like it. So this is where you kind of have to take the bull by the horns or the lion by the jaws and draw on that strength that you have and, you know, realize that, you know, not all friendships are, um, you know, what they're supposed to be or people who want to be involved with you because they see that you're on the way up. This is when you begin to have that discernment about who's for real and who isn't. And when you cut these people out of your life, you're going to find that uh, a lot of times they start petty arguments, petty jealousies, hateful words, uh, things like that that have nothing to do with anything. They're just angry and upset that they didn't have their way with trying to manipulate you. So in your partner's column, you have the Queen of Swords as well as that Knight of Pentacles. So you do have this air of a stability and things that you are working on and it's slow and you're building it and you're building it and you realize that it takes time and it takes sacrifice in order to get there. So when you have the Queen of Swords energy within yourself, this is giving you the ability to, uh, you know, cut those people off, the ones that don't mean you well, the ones that aren't your cheer leaders, the ones that whether they're men or women, okay? They, they're the ones that, uh, you know, pretend to be, and this is you taking off rose-colored glasses and putting on your uh, little discernment glasses or whatever so that you're able to see and you are like, uh, uh you're cutting them off before they even have a chance to sabotage you. So when we get to the eight, I mean to the to the obstacles and challenges, our fears and anxieties, we have the Eight of Wands as well as the Ace of Pentacles. And so with the Ace of Pentacles, you have the universe offering you this great opportunity and it's coming in fast. It's faster than you ever expected anything in your life to happen. And it's kind of scary and it's kind of exciting. And uh, you have this whole little doorway right here when this, this, uh, universe comes in and offers you this um, career move or career change or uh, 
this prosperity that's coming your way and it's coming really, really fast. And sometimes when that happens, we can get really distracted and then we end up surrounding, you know, we have people who all of a sudden come out of the woodwork and want part of you or want to be part of your life. Okay. Yeah. So, and there's always people who will pretend to want to be your partner because they want like fame by association or they want to be associated with you if you're not like a famous person, but they want to be a part of your life because of the prestige that goes along with it. So this is cautioning us that, you know, you need to be really careful and discerning of who you allow in your inner circle. Okay. And even people that might have been there your whole life, people who might have known you since they were a kid, uh, since you were a kid, they, you know, that doesn't mean that they have your best interest at heart because, you know, you're growing and changing and moving on. And they don't like that because they're going to lose you as part of their life and you're, they're being left behind. Okay. So sometimes the people we think that are closest to us uh, are our biggest uh, advocates, but um, a lot of times they're not. So you have a lot of really chaotic energy that's coming in uh, really fast, as well as uh, your success is coming in really, really fast. All these things you've been working on really hard. So this puts you in the mode of, you know, I have this whole world here in front of me, and here is your world card. And the twos are about decisions, and you're looking out into the wild blue yonder about where are you going to go? Where are you going to move to? What are your future plans? You're imagining and envisioning what it is that you want to create for your future. And you have the high priestess who is sitting here telling you this is something that you need to meditate on, pray on, uh, dig deep down inside you and find out exactly what it is you want out of life so that you make that balanced and that correct decision and not something that's just, you know, hastily made or uh, you don't get caught up in all of the uh, instant recognition you're getting from people that you didn't have before so much. Okay, so... In this last little set, we have the Seven of Wands as well as the Hanged Man. Uh, we have the Queen of Cups and the Ten of Cups in your partner's column. Okay, that water sign showing up again. In your obstacles and challenges, you have that Nine of Pentacles and the Six of Swords. And in your outcome, you have the Seven of Swords and the Ace of Swords. Okay. A lot of air and water coming on here. So, yeah, uh, you might find that, you know, where you had been stuck previously. Because this isn't, you know, this is, this hangman is uh, telling us that you are having to defend yourself. You're having to defend your position. You're having to fight really, really hard to stay on top. But you have that drive and you have that in you. You're, you're a fire sign. You have that uh, ability to, you know, knock out your competition, so to speak, and just, you know, you are no longer, in order to keep from being stuck, in order to stay in the same place that you are where there's no growth, you have to uh, consider moving on. Okay, so in your partner's column, we have the Queen of Cups as well as the Ten of Cups. So again, here comes this water person, this Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio person that is offering you this love that can, you know, see the future with you, that can see this happily ever after. This person may actually really and truly be entering your life around this time, the one that is willing to fight with you. To uh, If you're a man, uh, it's like your queen in a chess game. Okay, she's got gotcha. you. She's uh, making sure that, you know, everything's clear for you. And uh, the same thing if you are a female, this is somebody who really has your back and is your protector and somebody that looks out for you. And it's very loving and compassionate and forgiving. And you, can, like I said, you can actually really see that future with your person. So when we get to your obstacles and challenges, we have this nine of pentacles as well as the six of swords. So yes, this is telling us that it's time to move away. You know, you know, it's time to move away from the situation and leave behind past loves and past hurts and things like that. Of course, you're going to always have a little bit of hurt with you, which is going to make you uh, more picky in the future. It's going to make you where you feel like, uh, you know, you really want 
to make sure that the next person that you give your heart to is not going to take advantage of it. And as far as the Nine of Pentacles is, this is telling us not to get too comfortable, okay? Because you're being offered this ace. You know, like I said, you can remain in the same place and not move on. Uh, sometimes, you know, this is not about leaving relationships. It's about leaving your territory moving to somewhere where your value and your talents are more appreciated, uh, which again, opens up a lot of new opportunity for you. So she's, she's got this little garden here and it's coming to fruition. It's starting to blossom. It's not complete yet. So don't lose your focus by things that are pretty and, uh, you know, uh, kind of just keep you from, uh, making sure that everything is not, uh, tended to exactly the way that it should be, okay? You're starting now to be able to see a lot of the things that you've worked so very hard for, but more is coming, okay? So when we get to the <clears throat> outcome, we have this Ace of Swords and we have the Seven of Swords. So like we were talking about earlier in your reading, don't be distracted so much. Yes, focus on what it is that you need to do in order to continue this and create this world that you want. But there are people, like I was saying, that want to sabotage you, that want to manipulate you, that want to, uh, you know, tell you all the pretty things that you'd like to hear in order to be a part of your life when really they're, they're just there to use you or lie to you and manipulate you. But you have that Queen of Swords energy that's going to help you discern who these people are and be able to see them for, <laughs> for what they're doing, okay? I don't like that Seven of Swords person. But anyway, this uh, Ace of Swords tells me that you are going to be triumphant over all of this and uh, be able to move on and to create the life that you've always wanted uh, that enables you your creativity and your artistic uh, talents and uh, be able to uh, be the type of person that you want to be and have uh, the life that you want and you're going to be able to create this okay now there are going to be people who love you and genuinely care for you and want to be part of your life and there are those who are going to pretend so this month it's going to be about you know figuring out who's who okay all right, so that is your reading for the 4th through the 11th of October, 2020. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'll be back here next week for another update. And until then, I'll see you guys later. All right, bye-bye. Love you.